Zero. Seventeen years ago, a woman died. Her chest carved open with a sharp object. Just like that pig man. What difference? That woman was alive. Her heart was still beating as the organ was cruelly carved out of her. The male suspect was quickly caught. He must have planned to escape the attack scene as he called one before his capture. The police arrested him before he was able to utilize the waiting vehicle to flee the scene. Instead, the genius surgeon plugged inside. He was heading to the hospital. A seriously ill patient awaiting his arrival for life-saving treatment. However, the taxi got into an accident before reaching its destination. It collided with a large truck. The result ran once in redness. Sadly, as a result of this accident, the driver and surgeon died. As well as the young boy waiting for surgery. Life is truly unbelievable. What is the point of him telling us this story? It's just some kind of act, right? Probably doesn't mean anything. I'm not sure. Now then, let's begin our game, shall we? The rules are as follows. The pig stomach you cut open contained three syringes. Each of them is filled with a specific virus called Radical 6. Radical 6? This virus is special. It awakens a desire to kill oneself, among other things. Once infected, symptoms appear as early as 10 minutes, or take up to two hours. And the host soon finds the urge to commit suicide irresistible. <laughs> the mortality rate is 75%. Transmitted through liquids, it's highly contagious. Oh yes, I believe you located a set of documents during your search of this room. The set of files on FBR, the fanatic bio R virus. The mortality rate of this virus is 100%. Infection results in blood erupting from your body. is toxic, but using the other as a vaccination provides an antidote. What is he talking about? If I had foreseen that you would all choose to inject Radical 6 at this moment, I would have made sure to coat FBR on the fingerprint authentication device for you. That device over there? Oh, I do remember feeling something when I touched it. Like a prick. So we were all stabbed by a poison needle? On the other hand, if I saw that you were not going to inject yourselves with recklessness, then I would be sure to leave the needle with you. That way, you would not become infected with the magic by far. Wait, what? What are you saying? So wait, do we even need to choose? Huh? 
If what Zero told us is the truth, then the outcome will be the same. If we inject ourselves with this Radical Six, we're already infected with FBR. So they destroy each other and we're fine. And if we don't do it, that just means we weren't infected with FBR in the first place. But what if it's a lie? Huh? He's saying what if he's lying about being a psychic? Well, if you think about it, the likelihood that he's lying is incredibly high. So then, what do we do? What the hell do we do? Let's do it. Why? Care to share your reason? After everything, the issue isn't if Zero can see the future or if he's lying. It's just like Eric said. If Zero does have that power, then it's the same either way. That means all we need to do is think about what happens if he doesn't. Our fate can go four different ways if that's the situation. If we are infected with FBR, and we inject ourselves with Radical Six, or not. If we aren't infected with SDR, and we inject ourselves with Radical Six, or not. The important thing we need to remember, though, is the mortality rates. Zero said the casualty rate is 75% for the Radical Six virus. And we saw in the files that death is 100% confirmed for Fanatic Bio-R. So we can use that to determine Clear which option is best, right? I see. The probability that we're infected with FBR is 2 to 1. Which means, if we inject Radical 6, our survival rate is half of 125, 62.5%. And if we don't inject it, then our chance is sitting at 50%. Any objections? Then we know what to do. Okay, here we go. Ready? And... So are we good? Did we do the right thing? The lab door opened afterwards, so we must have. Do you feel any different? No, not really. So, I guess? <laughs> hey, Eric. I've thought this before, but, well, your laugh is kind of strange. <laughs> oh, uh, I'm sorry. I guess this is, well, sort of a bad habit I've had since I was a kid. What do you mean? Issues at home, I guess. Was your family difficult? That's just it. We were completely normal. A kind mom, a clumsy dad, and an annoying little brother. <laughs> oh, dear. What's wrong? Uh, I'm not sure. I've just been crying. Hey, you two. Mind telling mommy why you're crying? Chris broke my toy! No! It was your fault, Eric! Chris, Eric, listen to me, okay? When painful or sad things happen, people get angry or cry because of them. And even at those times, I want you to never forget to smile. Smile? Yes. Smile, no matter how painful things get, as long as you can face it with a smile, happiness will come to you. Smiles have a strange power. Really? Yes, really. And 
And that's not all. A smile can make everyone all around you happy, too. You too happy? You be happy, too? Show mommy your smile. Okay. Yeah! <laughs> you sure are something else. Hey, what about me? Did Daddy get some smiles too? Oh dear, it looks like Daddy's lonely, you two. Let's all give him a whole lot of smiles. Okay! okay. Get over here for a hug. <laughs> oh, you've gotten big. Me too! Me too! Okay, okay. Come at me, I'm ready. Yay! <laughs> <laughs> Mom always told us to never forget to smile. She'd never hurt a bug. Not even if a line of ants crossed her path. She was that kind and gentle. She was incredible. And when we lost her, that's when Dad changed. <laughs> Shut the hell up! Who said you can fucking cry? Chris! Oh, Jesus, Eric! Can't you even look after your shitty little brother? I'm sorry! I'm sorry! Forgive me! Please forgive me! Go! Fucking kids. Hey! Go find someone to give me beer! Don't cry. Don't get mad. You better always smile, was what Dad liked to say. But unlike Mom, he was never not angry with us. Eventually, I figured out how to smile, regardless of what was going on. A smiling day in and day out, no fun, not happy. I'd be made fun of, or yelled at. But no matter the pain, no matter how bad it was, I never raised my voice. I just kept smiling. I didn't stop, even after Dad fell ill and died. So I guess the two smiles, one taught by my mom and one forced by my dad, got kind of mixed up, and the result is what I pasted on my face. Eric, she's... I've never talked to anyone about all of this before, but... Mira, will you still love me? Even with me being like this? How dumb can you get? <laughs> yeah, you're right. I didn't even have to ask, did I? Eric, thanks for sharing that. It wasn't like I did it for you or anything. It just sort of came out, that's all. Yeah, still, thanks. To tell the truth, I just didn't want to end up like my father. So I forced my mouth to keep smiling through everything. But it's no use. The worst part of me still came to the front after we got trapped here. I pushed all of that on you, too. Don't worry about it. I'm all right. <laughs> okay. So you never mentioned you had a younger brother. Yeah. About your age, more or less. What? We're the same age? Oh, maybe we could be friends. Would it be okay if I met him after we get out? Um, well... Uh, anyway, sorry I turned the mood dark. <laughs> <laughs> you turned the mood. Oh, your jokes always crack me up, Eric. Huh? I mean, to think that was dark. You really have a sense for these things. Don't worry, listening to it was a lot of fun. Wait a minute. What makes you think that was all a joke? Uh-huh. It was such a sad story. He just told us he's been holding in this painful past the whole time. 
How is that a joke? Oh, <laughs> I just didn't think <laughs> to make a mistake like that. A mistake? I'm so sorry. I've always been clumsy. It's at times like these that I, I don't even know how to look, you know? Clumsy? Hey, Eric. Can you tell me? <laughs> Here, huh? Thank <laughs> you. 